Welcome. I will be demonstrating physical principles to give you an intuitive understanding of them. I will also give qualitative equations that describe the exact same thing. I will not be calculating any numbers or quantitative analysis by popular demand. Feel free to ignore the equations. A preview of upcoming material. The spring constant, K, describes the relationship between force and distance. The damping constant, C, describes the relationship between force and speed. constant m describes the relationship between force and acceleration. You can have independent accelerations in all three axes. Mass always has the acceleration due to gravity pulling it straight down to the center of the earth. It can simultaneously have acceleration on a level surface at right angles to the straight down direction. Use at your own risk. The safest thing to do is have a qualified motorcycle mechanic make your suspension adjustments. Don't ride motorcycles at all is even safer. If you are mechanically inclined and enjoy understanding things, then make sure you can set the adjustments back to the default. My manual says to turn the adjustments all the way in and then out so many turns for the default. If this isn't available to you, record all the steps you have done, say adjust one turn clockwise so you can undo them if there is no improvement. Avoid adjusting the damping all the way in or out. This will result in poor handling. Adjusting your suspension correctly can increase your safety and performance. A spring and mass form an oscillator that can oscillate for a long time. Damping is used to dampen this oscillation quickly. The damper turns the energy stored in the spring into heat. Omega N is the natural radiant frequency of the mass and spring with no damper. Fn is the natural frequency in cycles per second of the mass and spring with no damper. The effective force on a spring, damper, and mass the spring constant K multiplied by the distance displaced will give the force in pounds. The spring opposes movement from the rest position. If you compress it, it will push back in expansion. If you expand it, it will pull back in compression. This is the negative sign in the equation. The damping constant C multiplied by the speed of the forks will give you the force in pounds. It has the same opposing force and thus a negative sign. The mass multiplied by the acceleration will give the force in pounds. The mass moves in the same direction as the force, so there is no negative sign. This diagram shows the 300 pounds of motorcycle, the 160 pounds of the rider exerting force on the springs. The weight of the wheels is ignored as it is not compressing the springs. To shorten the lengths of the shocks, the free length is preloaded so that the spring will compress further few inches when the rider gets on. A shock at rest has a spring containing a great deal of dangerous energy. Make sure to use spring compressors before opening one. The external preload adjustment is used to adjust the shock to a satisfactory height. Note the damper can immediately create force when the shock is moving, like hitting a bump. The bigger the bump, the bigger the damping force. When the spring compresses fully and comes to rest, there is no more damping force. There may be two springs in the front forks and one or two springs in the rear shock or shocks. Once again, the energy stored in the springs is dissipated as heat in the damper. Dampers are designed to get hot. We have explained the terms in the top equation. Zeta, or squiggle, is the damping ratio. The damping constant C is the numerator, and the denominator is also familiar terms. Refer to the Wikipedia page for a spring mass damper model for further details. The spring and damper are the only two things we have to adjust, so we will look at them in detail. Spring. If you have a spring constant of 25 pounds per inch and apply 25 pounds of force to the spring, it will compress one inch. If you apply 50 pounds of force, it will compress two inches. If we have a damper with a damping constant of 10 pounds per inch per second, a force of 10 pounds will generate a fork speed of one inch per second. A force of 20 pounds will generate a fork speed of two inches per second. This is not the speed shown on your speedometer. One slug of mass accelerated at one foot per second requires a force of one pound. One slug of mass accelerated at 32.1 feet per second, the acceleration due to gravity, requires a force of 32.1 pounds. We will accelerate a mass of 1.93 slugs with a constant force of 10 pounds, or seven feet anyway. We will accelerate a mass of 1.93 slugs with a constant force of 20 pounds. 
We will accelerate a mass of 1.93 slugs with a constant force of 30 pounds. Just to remind you where Zeta comes from. Damping ratio has a C in the numerator and a K and M in the denominator. Running over a sheet of plywood or a steel plate would be a step input to the suspension. Ringing in the overshoot is a bit slower than the natural frequency Fn due to damping. You can have a little ring or none at all. There is a compromise between the frequency response, which I will spare you, and the step response. 1 over the square root of 2, 0.707, is a popular damping ratio. Damping is often poorly understood, so I will give extensive examples changing both force and damping coefficient. Damping is one of our two adjustment types. The acrylic cylinder is 4 inches wide and 16 inches tall. The discs are set 5 inches apart. The damping is adjustable. I'll show the lowest damping results twice as they go by fast. Damping converts the energy stored in the springs to heat. Adding weight causes sag. The spring constant for this fork spring is about 20 pounds per inch or 0.37, presumably kilograms per millimeter. It is available in a range up to 0.5 kilograms per millimeter or about 28 pounds per inch. Setting the sag, increasing or decreasing the preload, and setting the ride height all describe the same thing. Changing the preload does not change the amount of force it takes to bottom out the springs. Increasing the preload just lowers the range of motion. A light rider might not be heavy enough to get off the preload if it adjusted all the way up. Changing the spring constant does change bottoming out, but 99% of riders will just live with the springs they have. If you are a street rider and have never changed the preload, you haven't missed much. Track riders will set the ride height to get that last ounce of performance. Tail up, head down, wrist breaker weight on the handlebars. If someone complains of bad shocks, I suspect damping first and springs second. It's the old zip tie and the fork leg to check for bottoming trick, chief. I can set the damping by rotating the discs on my damper to allow more or less fluid flow. The discs are separated by a washer in the picture to make them easier to see. Setting the damping can be a major improvement to handling. It is as easy as opening and closing a bathroom sink valve. I will boldly predict that electronically adjustable damping, with or without computer intelligence, will become as common as anti-lock braking systems in the future. Touring riders can choose plush or sporty ride. Adventure riders face different terrain every day. Motocross riders can hit that sweet spot between too little and too much damping. Increasing the damping on my Honda allowed me to get on the brakes much faster. Instead of waiting a second or two for weight transfer, it was nearly immediate, and I just had to smoothly increase the braking pressure. Very helpful in an emergency braking situation at the expense of a bumpier ride. There is the difference between the coefficient of static friction and kinetic friction. This can cause jerkiness and fork motion. Those $10,000 forks can have you feeling silky smooth. Thanks for watching.